Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today HP just took the wraps off its HP Dragonfly Pro and the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. We'll get a look at that later today in a separate video. But this HP Dragonfly Pro is a close collaboration between HP and AMD. They work very, very closely together to make the user experience very seamless and a really good one. And I think for the most part, they really accomplished it. This is running the AMD Ryzen 7 7736 processor, an eight core 16 thread processor. It's got a gorgeous full HD plus display. It comes in an absolutely gorgeous colors. It's the ceramic white, which I have here, or the sparkling black. Both look pretty cool. Both look really nice. It also has some great battery life, really good performance, and a very efficient processor, as we mentioned. We're gonna get into it and more in this review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Dragonfly Pro, all new for 2023, coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just wanna let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP, I'm not being sponsored by HP, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. The HP Dragonfly Pro has a starting price of $1,399. Over at HP's website, it is available today, March 16th, 2023. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and we can buy one. And considering the high-end materials used here, the premium device that this is, it's not a bad price at all. And you're getting this AMD Ryzen processor, which not only gives you good performance, but it's very efficient and will give you good battery life, as you will see, later in this review. And without further ado, let's find out what you get inside the box. Feels pretty good. Let's put this to the side. You get your power brick. And one thing I want to show you, it is 96 watts, flip out prongs right there, 96 watts. So this is going to give you some pretty good charging rate, especially with the fact that it doesn't have a discrete GPU. Let's put that to the side. And I love the fact they give you a braided cable here. It looks really good. So that's going to be great. And that is absolutely gorgeous in this white. Wow. This is just absolutely stunning, people. Pretty gorgeous. And now, as far as the weight is concerned, I measured 1.547 kilograms or 3.66 pounds. That is definitely a little bit on the chunky side for a 14 inch laptop, but it is very premium, very solid and feels very high end. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side, you get two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data charge and display out. Moving over to the right side, a USB Type-C port that is USB 3.2 Gen 2, not Thunderbolt, but it is full function, also supporting data charge and display out. Now we need to talk about something that I just realized. There's no headphone jack, people. If you wanna use wired headphones, you're gonna have to use an adapter or you're gonna to have to connect via Bluetooth as far as headphones are concerned. No USB-A port and there's no HDMI, but you do have those two Thunderbolt 4 ports as well as that USB-C. Let's see if we can open this with one finger. We can, and that is absolutely gorgeous. Keyboard feels fantastic. And for those wondering, this is what it looks like from the back. And as you can see, absolutely stunning in terms of the design. 
Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I want to tip my hat to HP. They did an excellent job here. Good key travel, good feedback, good actuation, and never felt like my fingers were going to bottom out. This is one of the better keyboards you're going to get on the market for a 14-inch clamshell, that's for sure. Now, the multi-stage backlight worked well. One thing to keep in mind, if you go with the ceramic white, sometimes it's hard to see that white LED backlight against these ceramic white keys. You won't have that issue, of course, with the sparkling black, just something to keep in mind. But having said that, the keyboard has been really, really good. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, I'm happy to report that it is a haptic touchpad and the responsiveness has been great. Two finger scrolling work like a charm. All the gestures work well and the haptic engine on it has been tuned perfectly. I felt like it was really, really good as far as the responsiveness, as I mentioned. Again, very good in terms of this haptic touchpad. Okay, let's talk about what is user upgradable. And the quick answer is, Nothing is user upgradable. As you can see, the HDI motherboard and CPU, everything is soldered into the motherboard, the RAM, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and of course, the SSD. It is all soldered in. It's got a custom heatsink. There are dual fans here. But as far as upgrading the SSD, RAM, Wi-Fi, yeah, you can forget about it. Not happening. Just like the MacBooks, this too is not user upgradable. And speaking of the SSD, my review unit has 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage and very fast reads and writes, as you can see from these results. Now, I've been anxious to check out an AMD Ryzen 7 7000 series processor. And of course, this is my first opportunity here in 2023. We're looking at the AMD Ryzen 7 7736, eight cores, 16 threads. It's all built on their six nanometer chipset, of course, and this is no exception. So looking at the performance numbers here, the benchmark numbers, we're seeing really solid performance. And of course, not only are you getting really good CPU performance, but the integrated Radeon graphics, the 680M, has performed really well, outpacing, outclassing the integrated Iris XE graphics from Intel. And as you know, I've mentioned it many times, the XE graphics are a bit long in the tooth and in dire need of an upgrade. We didn't get it here this year so far, and we're seeing it getting outpaced and outperformed by the Radeon graphics. And that integrated solution to me is a lot better. That's going to allow you to do more gaming on this. It's going to allow you to do more video editing on this. It's going to allow you to do higher end graphics work. So that has been really good. And you can see it here when you compare it to the XE graphics, this Radeon solution is much better. So kudos to AMD for implementing that and doing everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all handled really well without any hiccups and without breaking a sweat. It did really well. Notice the very good single core score as far as the Cinebench R23. Notice the very good multi core core score when you compare it to some of the competition very solid performance overall so i'm not surprised by that now when i ran the time spy stress test to see if this will power throttle under heavy load it didn't get a passing score it got a 95.4 again that's a failing score so that means it will throttle down in order to maintain cooler temperatures which makes a lot of sense of course in a thin and light laptop so just keep in mind regarding that power throttling and when it comes to the surface temperatures, I thought it remained relatively cool with a couple of hot spots here and there, but never too hot to the touch, never unreasonable in terms of those surface temperatures. So that's been pretty good. And the fans, there are two of them under the hood, never got too loud under heavy load, remain relatively quiet and cool. So they did a pretty decent job when it comes to the thermals. Now, HP worked very closely with AMD on this laptop, especially when it comes to how the performance, the thermals, and the overall system handling is happening behind the scenes. So a lot of the things that are being done with AI or artificial intelligence, learning how the user is using this device is done behind the scenes, not so much for the user to be concerned about. And I think that's a good thing overall, especially for the average consumer who's not going to want to be bothered with having to fiddle with any settings amd and hp's worked hard at this to make sure that the settings are optimized for the particular user and i think for the most part they did a really good job here now of course if you are a power user you can fiddle with those settings the amd performance app here is really good and i have very good things to say about this as far as the control given to the user and again the ai employed here is very very impressive as far as learning what the user is doing how this user is 
using this laptop and then optimizing the performance to match that. I think they did a really good job and this collaboration is bearing the fruits of that. Okay, let's talk about one of the best parts of this laptop, and that would be the battery life. And we're looking at a 65 watt hour battery here. And I gotta say, AMD has done a great job once again, making not only a powerful processor, but an efficient one at that, that gives you really good battery life. And for instance, here, the modern office test, part of the PC Mark 10 battery of test that I ran, got 13 hours and 54 minutes. That was better than the Yoga 9i. That was better than the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro, both running Intel's 13th gen P-series processor. Here, we're doing much better. And across the board, you're seeing much better battery life, which is not a surprise. And if you do need to plug in, the supplied 96 watt power charger takes about an hour and 10 minutes to give you a full charge. That's pretty darn fast. Okay, let's talk about the display. One of the best parts of this laptop that's for sure it's a really nice display now keep in mind this is a full hd plus resolution that's 1920 by 1200 it is an ips display not an oled or anything like that it is a touch display that worked really well and they claim that it can get as bright as 400 nits i actually got a little bit above that so that's been pretty good although the chromebook by the way is a 1200 nit display this is not even near that of course that chromebook display is pretty nice that chromebook display is also a qhd plus resolution I'll leave a link for those that want to see that video in the description below. But as far as this display is concerned, we're looking at 60 hertz as far as the refresh rate. No option for a higher refresh rate. And there's no option for a 4K plus or even a QHD plus. Full HD plus is what we have here. Now, as far as display itself is concerned, it's really good. Really deep blacks, good vibrant colors, good coverage of the color gamut. And you're looking at a very color accurate display. So if you are a content creator, this is certainly going to get the job done. If you're going to do Lightroom, photo. Photoshop video editing, and of course, color grading. Now it is a glossy display. You'll notice certain reflections and glare depending on your lighting conditions. Not terrible, I've seen worse, but definitely something to keep in mind. And watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been really great on this display. Consuming media in general has been really good. So this display has really gotten the job done. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a multi-touch display, so you can navigate through the OS with your finger, although there is no pen support. That would have been pretty interesting, although it is a clamshell at the end of the day. My overall takeaway, this is a really good display, folks. I am not disappointed. Actually, it's a really excellent one. Although it would have been nice to have that QHD Plus 1200 nit display that you get on the Chromebook version. Again, for those that didn't see it, I'll drop a link in the description below. This is a really good display. I have no qualms about it. They did a really good job. And so this is the front-facing camera on the brand new HP Dragonfly Pro. Now, Dragonfly, as we've seen in the past, were geared towards uh, business users. This, of course, is geared towards consumers or freelancers, as they like to say as well. So looking at it, it's a pretty nice camera. It's actually pretty good. We're looking at 1440p, 30 frames per second here, which is really good. And then, of course, what do you think about the array mics? As far as battling the background noise and so forth, does it sound clear? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about it? It is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. And there is a fingerprint scanner located within the keyboard. Now in the My HP app, you can do a lot of controls over this camera, which I really like. There's the auto framing, which we, uh, we've seen this before with their HP presence detection cameras. Uh, this would be the portrait. This would be the tight shot. And then of course, this would be the wide shot so we've been we've seen the auto frame before so nothing new there but you also get the background blur effect which we can do like here and then you can control the level of the background blur which actually works relatively well or you could change your background here i have a cafe behind me but i want to do an outdoor i can do an outdoor or i can be in a living room so there are a few options when it comes to that and you can add your own so there's an option for that as well and then of course there's the appearance fe feature part of the enhancements here and 
you can change it. You can make it more aggressive. You could make it less aggressive, or you can make it zero as far as that. You could put on the natural tone. So for those that want to have natural skin tone, that will certainly help. I have the backlight adjustment on. I have the low light adjustment on. What do you think about this on this Dragonfly Pro? Let me know in the comment section below. I think it's actually pretty good. Again, let me know in that comment section below. Now, when it comes to audio, the HP Dragonfly Pro is really impressive here with nice sounding speakers. I think it's pretty full and rich. I think they did a good job tuning it. But of course, let's compare it to the MacBook Pro 14 that I have here with the M1 Pro. I think one of the best, if not the best in the business when it comes to laptop speakers and sound. Let's give them a listen right now. Now, what do you think about the difference between the sound between the MacBook Pro and this HP Dragonfly Pro? I think the Dragonfly Pro comes in a little bit short of the MacBook Pro in terms of the overall sound. But as far as a Windows laptop, it's up there. It's actually sounding really good. Now, comparing it to another Windows favorite of mine that I just reviewed, as far as sound is concerned, I think it's one of the best, if not the best, on the Windows side. So let's compare the HP Dragonfly Pro with the Lenovo Yoga 9i that I just reviewed. It's a Gen 8. And for those that didn't see the review i'll drop a link in the description below but in the meantime let's give them a listen and see which one comes out on top So what do you think about that sound comparison between these two excellent Windows laptops when it comes to the audio? I think the Yoga 9i sounded a little bit better. I think the Dolby Atmos on that was a little bit better as far as the differentiator, as far as the spatial audio is concerned, and giving it a little bit more oomph in some regard. So I think they did an excellent job. Although this HP Dragonfly Pro is no slouch, it's actually really good when it comes to the sound. As far as the tuning, I think they did a good job. But again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, HP has been touting this device as having 24 seven support with the click of a button on the keyboard. That's right, if you take a look at the keyboard, there's a dedicated 24 seven service support button right there. So when you click it, as I'll do right now, it brings up the My HP app. And once it does that, it gets to the support page where you can chat with a live agent, you can speak with a live agent and get all the product support that you need. Now, this is going to be $10 a month for this service, but they are going to include 12 months free with the purchase of an HP Dragonfly Pro or the HP Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. So that is something pretty interesting. Now, some people might not like the fact that it's taking up a dedicated key on the keyboard. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'm not sure if we could remap that key. That would be interesting if you can customize it to maybe something else for those that don't want that service support button. But but I think for those that want to have that convenience factor of just hitting that one button and it, or that one key, and that will bring up your 24 seven support when you need it, that might be very handy. But again, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Okay, folks, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Dragonfly Pro, all new for 2023? And I got to say, the collaboration between HP and AMD has really, really paid off here. I like the bright, sharp, full HD Plus touchscreen display, premium build and design, whether you go with the ceramic white or the sparkling black, both are actually gorgeous. Excellent battery life here. That's thanks to that AMD Ryzen 7 7736U processor. Runs cool and quiet. The Bang & 
Rolfson tuned quad speakers are really good, although not quite as good as the MacBook Pro 14, which I think is best in class. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports here, excellent keyboard, haptic touchpad, both worked really well. 1080p webcam, it's a five megapixel webcam, worked pretty good. Radeon graphics trump the Iris Xe graphics. That is a big benefit over an integrated solution by Intel. So they did a really good job collaborating here with AMD. Negatives, we're looking at no headphone jack. It has soldered RAM, SSD, and Wi-Fi, which I'm not a big fan of, as you know. No SD card, no HDMI, no high refresh rate option, and no UHD Plus option, or even an OLED option or something like that. You get a full HD Plus IPS, and by the way, it's really good. So you don't really have to worry about it. I just wanted to point that out. But I have to say they did a really good first outing here. Good collaboration between HP and AMD. And I can't wait to see the improvements they're going to make as this matures. But really good first outing here between HP and AMD. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.